Hello, and you're all very welcome to this week's edition of Matt and Michael's Lockdown with Matt Gilson and myself, Michael Farry. Good afternoon and greetings to everybody. I came across an old song recently, <clears throat> a song called Parted. The words were written by Fred Weatherly. That's the man who composed Danny Boy. And uh, I thought uh, you might like to hear it. Those of you who are of my vintage might recall hearing it on the radio, sung by that great Australian bass baritone, Peter Dawson. So you'll forgive me for dancing at the words, but I hope you enjoy my version of part of it. The rest our day is over and the dream divine. You must go back to your life. I must go back to mine. Back to the joyless duties, back to the fruitless tears. Loving and yet divided All through the empty years How can I live without you? How can I let you go? I that you love so well that I worship so, you that I worship so. Dearest, the night is passing, when it's the trembling moon. Hark how the wind ariseth, morn will be here too soon. Tell me again you love me, kiss me on lips and brow. Love of my soul, I love you, how can I leave you now? How can I live without you, how can I let you go? I that you loved so well, dear, you that I worship so, you that I worship so, I that you loved so well, dear, you that I worship so. Thank you very much. That was Parted, written by Fred, Fred Weatherly. Thank you. This poem comes from the fact that wasps often build nests in my shed at the bottom of the garden. And usually, as soon as I saw the nest being formed, I got rid of it. But things have changed as I got old. Wasps. As far back as he remembers, they try to build in the dark, sycamore shaded shed, under his corrugated iron, tight against a dry rafter above the dusty jumble of his useless stores. Early each summer, alerted by their buzz while planning, planting, pottering in his shed, he saw the beginnings knocked the flimsy base with rake or shovel, watched flakes flutter to the floor. Last week, while sorting seed, he saw this year's beginnings. Slower now, he found a fork, but considering downed arms. It's time to stand back, 
observe, learn tolerance in retirement. Let them harvest peeling bark, chew it, attach it to the roof, a nursery abandoned by autumn. He'll warn the grandchildren to allow them space to build and grow, live and leave. Hope they'll afford the same to him. Next, we have Matt singing with the Scottsdale Symphony Orchestra in Arizona, USA, sometime in the early 80s, I think. And he's singing, I hear you calling me. And I've included some nice summer photographs and videos from the garden. I know you're going to enjoy this. I hear you calling me. You call me when the moon has failed her light. Before I went from you into the night, you came. Do you remember back to you? The one last year. This poem I wrote early during the pandemic when I was more or less confined to base and I found that the little church in Rockfield, Kulani, County Sligo, which was my church just opposite the school and where I was baptised and so on, had a webcam so I could look in at mass or indeed look in at any time during the day and it has some very nice Meyer windows, including one, strangely enough, of St. Cecilia, the patron saint of music. It depicts her martyrdom. So as a result, I wrote a poem. Rockfield Church Webcam In these uncertain hours, when my physical world has narrowed to the house and garden, it's redeeming to stare at the sanctuary on the other side of the country. See the small red flame, the font where I was baptised, where I served, responding in Latin, in Troibo ad altara dei, where the bishop slapped me gently on the cheek, the lectern where I read at my parents' funerals, 
to everything there is a season. And at the mire window, where Cecilia, her lyre proud at her feet, her eyes raised, smiles, while the grim executioner raises the useless blade. I decided at a very early age that God probably didn't intend me to pursue an operatic career, which is another way of saying I never really felt the desire to sing opera. Probably knew deep down I didn't have the ability to sing opera and therefore I didn't feel a deep need to sing opera. But that didn't quell the desire to sing a tuneful aria if I thought it fell within my vocal parameters. Such an aria is Paragi o Cara from La Traviata. And way back in the 1980s, I had the temerity to ask that well-known local soprano, Teresa Carley, if she would sing it with me and help me to learn it and that we could perform it in concert somewhere. And she had the patience to take, the challenge, take on the challenge. And we did it, we learned it. And Tom Fitzsimons and Navin had this idea to perform a gala concert, semi-classical concert. And I thought, this is an ideal opportunity. So, Teresa and I agreed to sing La Traviata in Tom Fitzsimons' gala concert in Navin in 1987. Now that was the one and only time that this aria was sung. And my, one of my nephews, Peter, happened to take a video recording of the concert and it lay dormant in the drawer of somebody's dressing table for over 25 years until it was found and was considered to be such a treasure that we had a reunion of all those people as all those years later. And um, I'm happy anyway to share the memory with you now. I'm delighted that uh, Teresa has given permission that uh, the barrier be reproduced uh, for the entertainment of people in nursing homes and the need anywhere else, people who want to listen to it. Here is Paragi O'Cara from La Traviata, recorded in concert in Navan in 1987 with Marion, the late great Marion Gogarty at the piano, Teresa Carley and Matt Gilson. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> 